surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand on the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood, and have you completely forgotten this word of encouragement that addresses you as a father addresses his son. It says, My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline, and do not lose heart when he rebukes you, because the Lord disciplines the one he loves, and he chastens everyone he accepts as his son. Verse 7 goes on to say, endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children for what children are not disciplined by their father. If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate, not true sons and daughters at all. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the Father of spirits and live? They disciplined us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. Make level paths for your feet 
so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather healed. Amen. God's word is already blessed. I am going to ask you today to do something that you cannot do. I'm going to ask you to do something that you cannot do. Today's message is entitled, A Call to Endurance. A Call to Endurance. The theme of this passage is the need for perseverance and endurance through trials and tribulations. I want to let you know, Love Christian Center, that we are going to have to go through some trials and tribulations in this life. Amen? I want to let you know that the race is not given to the swift, neither to the strong, but it is given to him that endureth to the end. The writer here, and you know the writer is Paul, he develops the image of an athletic contest. The writer urges the readers to look into the great cloud of witnesses in uh, 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 chapter 11 for encouragement to run with perseverance the race of faith. The race of faith. As a climax to his presentation of the great heroes of faith, the writer calls the endurance of Jesus in the face of extreme suffering, in the face of extreme shame, in the face of extreme opposition on his way to the cross and on the cross, since I have been before you last, I have had the occasion to uh, talk with an amazing woman. I call her my wife. And we have counseled together on some things. And I want to tell you, this is a woman who runs the race to the end, who has the courage and the endurance to finish the race. Amen? Amen. In 1 Corinthians 9 and in verse 24, you will see where it says, do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way as to take the prize. Everyone who competes in the game trains with strict discipline. They do it for a crown that is perishable, but we do it for a crown that is imperishable. Therefore, I do not run aimlessly. I do not fight like I am boxing with the air. The Lord never was, nor ever has been, on the losing side. That's a good place for an amen. Huh? He never was, nor has he ever been, nor will he ever be on the losing side. When the Lord goes into the operating room with the doctor, the patient is going to come out all right. Huh? When the Lord goes into the courtroom with the defendant, it's going to be all right. Huh? He knows my name. He knows my pain because he has felt the same pain that we have felt. He knows my sorrow because he has felt sorrow. He knows how to be down. He knows how to shiver in the cold because he has felt cold. He knows what it's like to sweat in the heat because he has done so. He knows what it feels like to be hungry and thirsty. I'm glad this morning that he knows all about us. So when you feel like you just can't make it, when you feel like you just can't go on another step, you can be assured that he knows how much you and I can bear. The appeal to run with perseverance, the race marked out for us, suggests that 
the Christian life is more of a marathon than a sprint. Huh? Yes. Now some of us, or well, we can run a good 40. Some of us maybe even can run a hundred. But that mile, ooh, that might be a challenge. Huh? And, and, and a 5K, well, uh, if I have to. Uh, a marathon, uh, I'll be here when you get back. I'm so glad that he knows my name today. The appeal to run with perseverance. Uh, Paul is telling the Hebrew people here, to press on toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. The verb, I press, comes from a Greek word which means literally to follow after. Huh? The Greeks used it to describe a hunter who eagerly and relentlessly pursues his prey. You see, a person does not become a winning athlete uh, just by watching TV. Uh, you don't become a winning athlete by watching Michael Jordan. You don't become a winning athlete uh, by standing on the sidelines. You don't become a winning athlete by being a cheerleader. Huh? You become a winning athlete by preparing to participate in that sport. Huh? By practicing because perfect practice makes perfect. You become a winning athlete by doing what winning athletes do. Amen? Amen. You can't just put the book under your pillow and expect to absorb the knowledge through osmosis while you sleep. It's not working like that. You can't expect to just put on the uniform and all of a sudden have the skills necessary to shine in that sport. You see, he becomes a winner only when he gets into the race with a determination to win. The Apostle Paul had a steadfast determination. He would not quit. He would not turn back. He would not give up. He would not give in. He would not give out. He would not throw in the towel. He would not even slow down. He pressed on toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. If you want to be a winner in this race of Christianity, you must have a spirit of endurance. You can't turn, tail, and run at the first opposition. Huh? We would never get to the victory line. Sometimes you got to put some energy and effort into what you're doing for the Lord Jesus. Victory doesn't always come easy. It takes preparation. It takes us getting out of our comfort zone. It takes commitment. It takes a little sweat. No, it takes a lot of sweat. We got to do some things that sometimes we just don't want to do. We got to be some places sometimes we just don't want to be. Huh? We're not to picture the great cloud of witnesses in, 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 in chapter 11 as spectators in an amphitheater cheering us on in a race of faith. It is what we see in them, not what they see in us. Now, I want y'all to get this. This great cloud of witnesses, these are our examples. Huh? And they are looking at us because they see our potential. They see what we can be. They see what we can do. But not only what we can do in and of ourselves, but how much more we can do when we when we grab onto the cross, when we link up with Jesus. 
I told you I was going to ask you to do something that you can't do. Because when you do all that you can do, you can do even more when you link up with Christ Jesus. And that's what God expects of us. He doesn't expect us to only do what we can do in and of ourselves. Because he wants us to lean and depend on him. And take it just a little bit further. Do more than we can do by ourselves. He wants us to give ourselves over to him. And together, he will allow us to do what we couldn't do by ourselves. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Endurance to the end. The greatest encouragement comes when we fix our eyes on Jesus. The Bible describes him as the author and finisher of our faith. Jesus is the perfect example of the faith that we ought to express. We ought to be able to say that we can do all things through Christ who gives us the strength. For a long time, I thought God was pleased knowing that I was more than willing to do what I could. I said, well, if I do all that I can, God will be happy with that. I was wrong. He wanted me to do more than I could do because he wanted me to reach back into his resources and to do more than just what Ed Richardson can do. He wants you to do more than you're able to do. You need to lean and depend on him. And he will prepare the way. There aren't many folk who do what they can, let alone what they can't. Huh? Very few of us have reached our potential, let alone exceeded it. We get annoyed when someone wants all that we have, let alone ask us for something that we don't have. Yet, as I've studied this text on this week, I have come to realize that God wants us to do what we cannot do. Huh? What you talking about? Well, the mark of a Christian and the sign of the faithful when you are able to do what you can. When you are able to endure hardship as a good soldier, when you attempt the impossible and do the unbelievable, it's not enough to do just what you're able to. That's the least that you can do. It's not enough to give all that you've got. That's just a bad payment. In the words of God, Paul tells us to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. Somebody may feel that they cannot do that, but God wants us to do what we can. Amen? We serve a God who calls us to a mission impossible. He calls us to go into the hedges and the highways and compel men to give their lives to Christ. Christ does not call us to a religion of ease, but he calls us to a religion of service. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you have enlisted in the army of the Lord. You are a soldier in the army. He does not call us to convenience. He calls us to sacrifice. God doesn't want to hear, Lord, I've tried. In the words of Yoda, try not, do. God is not calling us to be average. God calls us to be unique. He wants us to be the vessel that holds his power. The world knows what man can do. But God wants us to be an example of what he can do. Man already knows about our abilities, but man needs to learn about God's abilities. Huh? Man already knows what he can do, but we ought to be a witness of what God can do. Hebrews verse 1 says, look around at the winners, the great cloud of witnesses. We're introduced to us in Hebrews 11. They are the heroes of the faith. It is not suggested here that these men and women now in heaven are watching us as we run our race, like people seated in a stadium. The word witnesses does not mean spectators. 
They're not watching us as we're in a contest. Huh? These people are not witnessing what we are doing. Rather, they are bearing witness to us that God can see you through. Amen. 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 One of the best ways to develop endurance and encouragement is to get to know the godly men and women of the Old Testament who ran the race and won. If you're having problems with your family, read Joseph. Huh? If you think your job is too big for you, study the life of Moses. If you're uh, uh, attempted uh, to re retaliate, see how David handled his problems. If you're sick and you can't get well, you ought to look up old Job. In verse 2, Paul says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. What are the weights that we should remove that we might win the race? Everything that hinders our progress is a weight. It might be your car or the car that you want. It might be your house or the house that you want. It might be your, 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 your relationship or the relationship that you want. It could be a weight. Whatever it is that is hindering you from serving the Lord, you ought to take it off. Huh? Christianity is not about what we can do. It's about what we're being able to do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Anybody can do what he can, but it takes a child of God to do what he can. Huh? All of us are able to do what we can even if we don't do it. And we all know about that. Huh? I'm reminded of an episode of Fat Albert <laughs> years and years ago when Fat Albert was sitting on the corner and one of the kids came by and said, Albert, what are you doing? I said, nothing. He said, Albert, how can you do nothing? He said, it's easy. I think of something to do and then I don't do it. <laughs> we can all do nothing. Huh? I tell you this morning, it's good to do your best, but if you have been born again, if you have been washed in the blood of Jesus, if the Lord saved your soul, if the angels in heaven done signed your name, you ought to be able to do what you can't do. Whatever you can do, you and God can do it better. With God, your little becomes a lot. With God, a handful of meal and a cup of oil is more than enough to feed a hungry preacher and a starving widow. Right. With God, two small fish and five barley loaves is more than enough to feed a hungry multitude. Whatever you got becomes greater when you hook it up with the Lord. That fine house becomes a home when Jesus stops being a visitor and takes up residence. Right Knowledge hooked up with the Lord is turned into wisdom. A dream blessed by the Almighty becomes a vision. A career that yields to the Spirit becomes a calling. A life that is dedicated to the Lord becomes an abundant life. When you trust God with what you can do, He gives you the power to do what you can and I just stopped by this morning to tell you that if you are determined to endure, God will turn your cannots into cans. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. I can run and not get weary. I can walk and not faint. When you give him all you've got, he supplies you with whatever you like. When you are incapable, he's capable. When you are weak, he is strong. When you don't know, he does know. When you are powerless, he's all powerful. When you don't have an answer, he does. I wonder if there's anybody here who has reached the unreachable. I wonder if there's anybody here today who has carried a load that they thought was too heavy for them to carry. I wonder if anybody has ever succeeded on a mission impossible. Can I get a witness this morning? Well, this morning I want to inform you that you can't do what you can't do 
until you do what you can do. Huh? I don't want to confuse anybody. Let me say that again. You can't do what you can't do until you do what you can do. Huh? You can't handle heavenly vision if you're not faithful to earthly tasks. If you're not faithful over a few things, he will not make you a uh, 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 ruler over many. If he can't trust you with small things, he can't trust you with the big things. So the writer this morning tells us to endure to the end. Look unto Jesus who is the author and finisher of our faith. Huh? Sometimes when trials and tribulations come up, we sometimes find ourselves ready to give up. They whipped him with 39 strikes, but he kept on running the race. They ripped the flesh from his body, but he kept on running. They nailed him to an old rugged cross out on Skull Hill, but he kept on running for you and for me. And then when they lifted him up and placed a crown of thorns on his head, but he kept on running. They pierced him in his side, but he kept on running. They laid him in a borrowed tomb, but he kept on running. He was introduced to death, to the grave, and hell for three days, but he didn't get down. He didn't get weary. He didn't get tired and he didn't stop. He kept on running. But early one Sunday morning, hallelujah, he got up with all power in his hands, all power in heaven, all power in earth in his hands. So I urge you this morning to run and to keep on running. Run for your family. Run for your job. Run for your salvation. Run for your children. Run for your parents. Run for your peace of mind. Run for yourself. Run for your life. Run for your God. Paul said, I cannot myself, cannot count myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, Forgetting those things which are behind and pressing on toward the mark of the prize of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus. Because after a while, running days will soon be over. Mm -hmm. After a while, All right, now. we won't have to run no more. Amen. After a while, we will Amen. receive a crown of life. Yes. Soon Amen. and very Amen. soon, I'm going to see the king. I hear the Savior say, they strengthen indeed is small, child of weakness. Oh. Watch and pray. Find me thine all in all. Because Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Because Jesus Paid it all. All to him I owe. Amen. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Amen. Lord, now indeed I find thy power and thine alone can change the leper spots and melt the heart of stone. Because Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. And when before the throne I stand, in him complete, Jesus died to save my soul. Yes, Lord. My lips shall still repeat because Amen. Jesus Amen. paid it all. Yes. All to him I owe. Yes, Sin has left a crimson stain. He washed me yes, white Lord. as snow. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for your encouragement to continue to run. We thank you, Father God, that you sent your son. Is that your worship right there? Thank you, Lord.